Trekking are here to answer your questions about trekking. Introducing the Tuesday Tune-In, hosted by Andy and Dave. Are we live? No. As far as we know, it's live. Let's check if we're live, mate. Let's check if we're live. Are we live? Live. 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 Tackling subjects such as... Talking about group travel. Charities. Altitude. Flying. Footwear. Vaccination. Fitness. So you can make an informed decision about trips and go into them as prepared as possible. Years of expertise shrouded in top-level banter. Tune in every Tuesday at 12.30-ish. There it is, Nicely mate. done, Dave. Nicely Our done. dramatic entrance <laughs> yet. I know, I know. Yeah. Well, hello, everyone. Uh, nice to see everyone on the live. Geez, we've got some comments coming in already. So it's a little bit different this week. Um, Dave is leading because I'm literally on the road in Iceland and yeah. uh, but obviously didn't want to miss being on the Tuesday tune in with it being competition winner announcement of course um so Dave yeah you've been uh, you've been designated head of tech yeah. today mate yeah so uh, hang on I gotta do I gotta I gotta I gotta, I gotta channel Andy so <laughs> there's it going welcome to the Tuesday tune in um let's see what we've got on the comments so hey Sophie hey Lyndon Simon Grace, Ryan, wow. Gary, Diane, Ian, Anthony, Gary, Richard, Ruby, Raymond, wow. Benjamin, Jane, Evertrek, go away, Ellen, Danielle, <laughs> Jane, Steph, Kelly, Rachel, Stuart, Claire, it's Andrew. I'm going to keep going. I can't keep going because more keep arriving. Jeez, oh, that, that, is, just, that is crazy. Yeah, I just stopped before. Claire, Sandra and Brian. <laughs> so, well, Marky V's on. I'm just going through now because I, I, can, I can see some of the comments from, from, this, from this angle. But uh, no, it's great to have everyone on. I hope. I, I'm literally in the middle of nowhere, but I've got some decent 4G, so hopefully that'll, that'll hang in, Dave. But I know Dave, you're, you're in capable hands with Dave. He's a painted Yeti. You know the score, Dave. Yeah, exactly. And Andy, um, because his location is secret, he's actually pixelated his face. Um, so that's why he might look a little bit blurry. Oh, really? Is it? Is it? Is it quite bad? No, well, it is on my screen. I don't know if it's on anyone else's screen. Um <laughs> Yeah, so may, 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 maybe reply to us and let us know. Hashtag blurry. Um, if Andy is, uh, if Andy's blurry. <laughs> Hashtag blurry. Um, and yeah, let's. This, this is job, good luck, being, everyone. This is weird being a a, a role uh, reversal. So, and tell us what uh, <laughs> today's tune in's all about. Brilliant, brilliant. Yeah. So today is well, we're going to talk a lot about Everest Base Camp today. So we've run uh, over the last kind of month. We've been, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure it's not a surprise now. Um, but yeah, the uh, we ran uh, an Everest Base Camp competition and it was absolutely crazy. I think, Dave, we've had our most entries we've ever had. Yeah, I think yeah. just under 30,000 entries, which is like the most we've ever had, which is amazing. Yeah, um, so thank you to everyone who's who's kind of you know joined in. Uh, hashtag blurry is trending now, so that's good. Yeah, that's hashtag good blurry, hashtag good. undercover, hashtag slightly blurry, hashtag pits <laughs> hashtag secret. Um, so... Well, Keith, Keith McGregor says, Andy, not too bad on my screen. So there we go. Hopefully it's all good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, though, Keith isn't wearing his glasses today. So he's... Um, it, it, uh... <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. No, no, but uh, Dave, you know, we I know it's been obviously behind the scenes. We've been looking at things and like, wow, it's, you know, a lot of people have entered this competition. And yeah, thanks yeah. for entering. I know, I know, you know, that sometimes there's competitions out there, but we started doing this probably around five, five and a half years ago. And it really was um, an opportunity that we had to, you know, because we know like myself and Dave um, been running Evertrek now for a number of years. Um, and, you know, primarily we, we, we started in Nepal. Uh, was, uh, that's where the name come from, Everest Trekking, Evertrek. And that was our first ever trip. And it's uh, still our most popular trip, even though we've, We've grown quite a bit since then, and we've, uh, you know, we, we now run trips in, in 14 different countries, which is fantastic, and uh, continuing continuing to grow our uh, trips that we run. Yeah. But we always go back to the, the the first one. You know, your first love is always you always remember your first love, right, Dave? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, that one uh, finally sort of gets under your skin. Honestly, Nepal for me was always that. You know, we always say, you know, it's the Everest Base Camp, Nepal, the Himalaya was the first thing yeah. that we kind of like sold to the world. And 
a lot of people like it. It's strange. A lot of people have different reasons for wanting to go there, but everyone always says the same thing when they come back. God, I love Nepal. That place really got under my skin. Do you know what? Yeah. I really feel like my life's changed as I come back. Um, I remember um, trekking there exactly. in 2019, yeah. April, with a great guy called Stuart. Um, and he hooked up with me a little bit while afterwards. And he says, he told me one time, it, it really has changed his life, you know, and it, and it can yeah. Um, you can yeah, yeah. you can go to Nepal for all the reasons that I went <laughs> for, which was I love the history, the mountaineering. I've been obsessed with Everest since I was a child. I saw you yeah. went there. This is pre Evertrek, and me and Andy used to work together. And I saw him actually posting as he was trekking. And I think we can find the picture somewhere where I texted you and said, "Oh, when you come back, let's meet up." I remember that himself. And then when I met up with you in Cardiff, <laughs> you came up with this crazy idea um to set up a trekking company to sell trips and yeah. I, mean, I remember from that point i was like it's a great idea i'll be the first customer and yeah not look back since and you know I, I know loads of people have probably got similar stories about how their lives changed from just their first trip to base camp yeah exactly it is it's a really special place and you know there's so many different facets to it obviously you've got the the challenge, you know, the, the trek itself, which is <clears throat> hard. Um, it's certainly challenging, but, you know, more than achievable for everyday people. Um, but, you know, we've also got the, the, the people as well. You know, the, the Nepalese people are some of the friendliest in the world. And especially when you, you're traveling through kind of the, the Sherpa villages and you're meeting people who live in the mountains and, and they're kind of <clears throat> how humble they are. Um, you know, it's the people you meet as well when you're there. Um, you know, the friends you make on the trips and and then obviously the landscape you're trekking through, you know, which is, you know, the Himalayas is, is huge. It's like yeah. you're walking through a valley of giants and it's just, yeah, it, it certainly is um, uh, an amazing trip. So, yeah, it's great. Great in the comments as well. I see we got everyone's putting their nationalities up. I can see a lot of Welsh. I know, it's great. Gray, see Scots. Obviously, uh, Daniel England Mark, England England as well. Poland. Yeah, we got a, <laughs> a, there's a couple of Welsh flags there from Sarah Jane Ashcroft. Plenty of great. Scots as well. Brilliant. Yeah, let us know where you're listening to by posting the flag of your uh, of your homeland. Um, South Africa as well. Good luck from uh, South Africa. Brilliant. England, a lot of Welsh on here. Australia, great stuff. Who we got? We got, uh, I think that's Gibraltar. You're testing, oh, the Philippines. I, 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 I know that flag. Wow, really coming through. We got Chile. Um, we got more from Poland. Wow, we got a lot of flags coming in here. A lot from yeah. Wales as well. Brilliant, brilliant. It's uh, nice to see so many, so many flags here. Brilliant. Oh, Newport. God. There we are, Dave. Newport from your Newport. fellow. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's all going too crazy now. I, I want to get back to Newport. Who's Newport? Rebecca Watkins. Newport. <laughs> we got Dutch, yeah. Russia. We got who else? We got we got lots of different ones here. We got uh, Finland. Wow. Well, Probably God, a multinational. This, is... this one today. <clears throat> this is uh, yeah. This is crazy. I can't keep up with the flags. Um, I know. I've never had this many many flags. I think that's a good question. Switzerland. Kafili. Hey, our our office is in Kafili. That was from Gemma. Um, Then we got Callum from Chepster. We got Girish from Germany. Liam from Spain. Brilliant. Well, I mean, we could go all day with these, couldn't we, with the flags? But uh, (laughs) wow, I don't know that one. Andres Vipa. You're testing my flag knowledge with that one. I'm going to go for. It looks like it's somewhere in Africa. I don't know. Um, my, my, I need to up my game with regards to flag knowledge. I thought Wait, I was you pretty were good, really, but really you not. were really good about that. Oh, we've got someone from uh, Zanzibar as well. Amazing. Well, ah, amazing. Love Zanzibar. Come Brilliant. Up, Mycetola. Mycetola. Brilliant. We've, got some, <coughs> we've got some really like kind of like, yeah, I'm from Kafili, Maisi Kuma, and then we've got Zanzibar. It's amazing. Lithuania there from yeah, uh, Pakistan. <laughs> Pakistan. Hey, how's it Brilliant. going? Cool. Cool. We'll be um we'll actually be out in Pakistan soon. We've got a K two base camp um locked and loaded. You know, people waiting yeah. to go over there. So um yeah, always been on a, a big big bucket list of mine to go over there and uh, trek in the Karakoram. Yeah, absolutely can't wait. Was that Patrick from Poland? Awesome. Yeah, big time. Ah, oh, Portugal. Love Portugal. Anyway, so welcome to Flag, <laughs> Lappy and Dave. <laughs> I know. Well, look, Dave, I mean, we've had normally what we do with, um, I mean, Dave, I'll, I may as well go straight into it. We, we obviously, we chat about Everest, we chat about Nepal. Then we, we kind of go into a bit of Q&A. Obviously, we've got the winner announcement, yep. which will be on this as well. But we want to tackle some questions first, because we like to leave the, the winner announcement. We don't want to, you know, we don't want to throw that straight in. We like to keep you hanging a little bit. Um, so do hang on as best you can. Um 
yeah, Dave, I think we should tackle some questions because I think we've never had this many questions about MSG. Yeah, no, there's there's more than I think like, we're gonna we're gonna be lucky if we get through most of them. Um, but what we'll do is yes. obviously some of them we will answer. I've tried to group together some people, but to be honest, they kept coming in so fast. Yeah. But, um, yeah. you know, we've had lots and lots of questions about um, <coughs> Everest Base Camp, what it takes to get there. One of the probably the biggest ones. Um, yeah. Now, I know a lot of you have asked this, so apologies if I don't read out your name, but I know uh, Stuart, Donna, Iris, Keith, Simon, Lee, yep. Stephen. There's loads of people that have been asking this in one way or another. Which yep. is, how fit do you have to be in order to trek to Everest Base Camp? Um, and it's a great question. It's one I never get bored yes. of answering because every person's a little bit different. Everyone has their own concerns. But it stems from, you know, we had one question as well, and I'll see if I can find it. Um, if one person slows down, does that mean the whole group has to slow down? Yeah. Everyone has that fear about going underprepared. And really that fear is so a lot of the time rooted in not wanting to affect other people and not wanting to be seen as a burden and holding the group up. Um, yeah. Honestly, so with Everest Base Camp, yes, you do need a certain degree of fitness in order to be able to do it and do it comfortably and have a good time. I have known people roll off the sofa, no training whatsoever, um, you know, perhaps unfit. And they have made base camp and back. Um, I will say that 100% of everyone we've ever taken there has come back. Um, but, yes. um, but, you know, perhaps not enjoyed it to the full extent because yeah. when you do climb at altitude, there's less oxygen, which makes every bit of exercise you do more strenuous. The more yeah. you drain, the more you exhaust, the more energy you use. And the harder it is to recover for the next day. So you kind of end up on this little bit of a snow harder every day. However, you don't have to be like a massive athlete. You don't have to be a triathlete. You don't have to have done, you know, 50 mile run on the weekend, although I know Bri did. Um, you know, I would say as long as you've got a reasonable base level of fitness, you put in some effort, um, you know, to build the strength and endurance in your legs. Um, yeah. And really, there's no substitute to say, if you book it a year in advance, my advice would be, at that point, start going out yeah. and doing longer and longer hikes. But you don't have to start with a five, ten hour hike. You can just go out to your local park. You can get an hour or two in on the flat. You can do that for a little while. Then start introducing hills. Then head out into the mountains and do longer and longer and longer days. Um, because with base camp, it is an 11 day walk. Um, from the moment you arrive at look, you'll start walking eight days up to base camp, three days back down. And um, yeah. yeah, those three days are the, the, weirdly, I think the three days on the way down are actually the hardest because they're the longest. You love them. They are. I do. I, I like the return journey. I think once you once you get to base camp and you know, you've know done the, you've done the hard stuff, although supposed hard stuff. Because actually, Dave said there, the journey back, three days, the long way. Um, you know, you're talking like 20 kilometer days or altitude, always, always hard. Um, you know, but it is something when, when you, it's, it's that feeling, isn't it? When you've achieved something, um, sorry guys. Uh, yeah. When you've achieved something, you've got to have a space camp and then on the way down and knowing you've done it. And then especially your altitude, because when you're struggling at almost five and a half thousand meters and then on the way down, you, the, the more oxygen, just, you just start to perk up and you feel, uh, you know, you start to appreciate things a bit more. Whereas on the way down, on the way up, your feet towards the floor, because you may be not feeling a hundred percent. Whereas on the way down, you're kind of looking around a bit, you know, a bit more casual. So it is, um, it's definitely uh, a more enjoyable experience on the way down. But obviously it's, you know, up, up and down is absolutely fantastic. And Dave's yeah. right there. I think anyone that asks, because there are a lot of questions around that, the fitness and um, things around age. I've seen there's quite a few age questions as well, like if there's an age limit um, on, on trips as well. But from a fitness point of view, um, you know, it is hard. It's a challenge. Um, you know, anyone that labels it as a holiday, it's kind of misleading in a way um, because it is a, a challenge. And, and once you yeah. accept that, I'm like, right, cool. I'm happy. I'm not going, you know, um, to relax on a beach. I'm going to go there and I'm going to actually put myself into this. Um, it is very, very rewarding. Um, and as Dave said earlier about the things that it can do to your life, because, you know, you're trekking in one of the most beautiful parts of the world. Yeah. Um, and it is. Um, certainly amazing. So yeah, Dave, Dave's answer to the fitness thing. I know there's a lot around age as well. And, you know, yeah. we've had broad scope of, of ages. I mean, and that's what we kind of expected would happen. Yeah. So I'll pick up from where Andy left off. 
with regards to age, yeah, we there's no real age limit with regards to sort of either end of the spectrum. I do think it's important that we'll start with the young. I do think it's important that one, they're physically able to do it. A lot of people who are a lot younger are unable to. Um, and then there is, you know, the, the other end of the spectrum, which is like, sorry, and I've just jumped in with your question. Then there's the higher end. Sorry, of the spectrum. I think so. It's sorted now. Yeah, no, that's okay. Yeah, we were literally this close to deploying um, <laughs> one of the other yetis in the office to join in. But um, yeah, so with the, with the other end of the spectrum, like the higher age, um, yeah. we've had, I think our oldest was about 72, 74, something like that. Um, yeah. Really, you know, as the onus really is on yourselves to kind of assess whether or not it is something that's viable for you. But I certainly think that age is absolutely no barrier. Um, really my biggest concern actually comes from not so much like older trekkers, but younger trekkers, um, you know, people bring in their young children and stuff like that. There is a couple of things to consider. The first is obviously that it's not, it doesn't come without a level of danger. It's not incredibly yeah. dangerous. And the way we run our trips is very, very safe, but obviously there's a risk of altitude sickness. Um, you know, anytime you travel anywhere in Asia, you can pick up like stomach bugs, the famous deli belly and things like that. Um, so, you know, the, there are certain things that I like everybody on the trek to be cognizant of and aware of. And obviously, if you're bringing someone too young that doesn't fully understand the risks, then yeah. I think, yeah, it's a little, it can be a bit tricky with, do they know what they're getting into and, and, and stuff like that. But certainly age is absolutely no barrier. Exactly. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. Sorry about the the disconnect there. It's um. I say I'm I'm in a, a camper van at the moment with um, my wife and, and Ellie as well. Um. Who's how are you doing, else? Okay. <laughs> She's going to the loo. Um. Yeah. yeah so sorry if I if I cut in and out. Um. But I know Dave Dave's got it covered. Um. But yeah, with regards to uh, equipment and and everything like that at all, because I'm just looking through the questions now because we've we've had a lot around equipment. Um. And Dave, I know you're you're hot on it with the equipment. And essentially, yeah. there's a lot of when, when we talk about the the type of equipment you need to get to every space camp it's you'd be surprised it's actually a lot of the gear you use if you're trekking in the uk if you're hiking um you know all year round you're, you've probably got maybe 80 90 percent of it already yeah um the, the things like um you know obviously you've got your, your your pack you've got your down jacket you've got your waterproofs um you know you might have a set of gloves uh you might have uh, maybe uh, like some trekking trousers you know or um uh, I'm trying to think of the um, the alternative for, for the ladies. But, yeah, so you've got, like, a lot of stuff that you're already using. You've probably got hiking boots. Yeah, you know, if, you, if you're looking at some of the higher stuff, you might already have uh, maybe boots for crampons. But looking at um, the full list, um, I think Vicky or Jody, I think it's Vicky on the, the questions, right? She just put a link on there. Uh, my first time altitude essential kit list that won't break the bank. So that's just something that we've – a little article we've put together that has yeah. all the equipment on there. Um and another one as well that Vicky's just popped in there um, is the trek and equipment list. So these are things that from all of our customers, you know, literally we've had thousands of our ever trekkers now go to Everest Space Camp and do it successfully. Um, and a lot of it for us, Dave, isn't it, is around the preparation because, you know, some people who book this trip, um, and obviously I know we're here to, to talk about the competition and obviously it's going to be uh, a person that wins that with their, one of their friends. So I know that's only two people, but to anyone else who wants to do it, you know, it is if you're thinking about it and it's got the equipment uh, and that's on your mind, do check out the Knowledge Centre on our website because there's a lot of articles we've written there about equipment. Yeah. Um, and, that, you know, likely you've, you've probably got most of it already. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Getting some questions as well about sort of um, the altitude. So we, we are going to be sort of jumping from one subject to another to try and answer as many yes. as we can. Um, but Katri has asked an interesting question. Um and this is something we do get for people that have never been to altitude before and don't know what to expect. And I asked this question of Andy before I went a very long time ago, which was, does the air get harder to breathe the higher you go? And are there any recommendations you have for handling the change um, if it does have a physical effect? So when you're climbing at altitude, Katria, and, and anyone else who's interested, the air doesn't feel any different to breathe than it does at sea level. Yeah. Um, so we can sit and have a conversation like this at 5,000 meters and it won't necessarily sound any different. Where it does make a difference is the moment you start doing anything physical. That could just be yeah. walking. Um, if you get out of bed too quickly, you can get a dizzy head. But as you get higher and higher, 
it takes less physical exertion for you to start to feel that sort of, um, you know, like if you've done any hard cardio, ridden a bike uphill, you know that feeling yeah. when the heart's going and you're gasping for air. That point just arrives sooner. Um, and the best way that we found is to acclimatize well. The better you acclimatize, the more your body adapts to that low oxygen environment. And we acclimatize by following a few simple like mountain rules that we call them. Um, yes. The first is that we walk very slowly. Um, it's not a race. Um, you know, we say slow at the start, fast at the end, you know. And so in the first few days when you're not really feeling the altitude, it's really important to go slow, stay within yourself, hang back in the group, chat and enjoy it. As you're going up then day by day and even during the day, you're having longer to adjust to the increase in altitude. Um, the other yeah. one is we drink water like a Baskin shark. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The process of acclimatization. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. Yeah, you're literally sucking on the tube. And then when you stop, it's in a bottle and a cup of tea at lunch. And it's really important because when you um, acclimatize, naturally, you'll start peeing yeah. more. The process that your body starts means that, you know, you, you start peeing, you start dehydrating. Coupled yeah, yeah. with that extra exertion, because it's harder at altitude, means you might sweat a lot more. Um, and it's important to replace those fluids. The moment you dip into dehydrated territory, you stop acclimatizing. Yeah. Um, and the other one is, as well, is there are certain medications that you can take. Very famously, um, Diamox. I think we've been live about Diamox. There's certainly a blog about Diamox. So if yeah. one of my Yeti friends in the office can actually post that. Um, it'll tell you everything you need to know because that's pretty much alive on its own. But essentially, it's a, a pill that you can take in the morning, in the afternoon, either a full or a half, um, which boosts your acclimatization. It, it's not a cure-all, but it certainly can make the difference. Um, certainly, I know a lot of people that have joined Team Diamox on a trek or two. I have myself when I was on Kilimanjaro, and um, yeah, I believe it does make a big difference. Yeah, it does. It's, it's one of those. It's a tool, isn't it? That if, if uh, I mean, Diamox... I mean, certainly back in the in, in, in the old days when kind of like um, the classic, you know, drink enough water, go slow, look after yourself. You know, mindset is a big thing as well. That obviously, you, it's hard to control your body sometimes if it's not well. Um, but a lot of it does come down to, you know, just from what we found with, um, you know, the clients who are reaching Everest Base Camp and sometimes the people who don't, which is very small, actually. It's less than 5%. So we have over yeah. 95% success on Everest Base Camp. Uh, which is, you know, we're very proud of um, because we, we do take our time. There's acclimatization built into the itinerary. And it's, I'm just going through the questions there again. And I, I wish we could go for everyone, guys, because there's a lot, there's a lot of questions on here. But some people have asked around, you know, do I need any climate experience? Uh, do I need to wear crampons? But actually the Everest Base Camp, the classic route, which is, um, you know, I, I've done it five times. Dave, you've done it four times. Um, you know, we have ever trackers who, who go there, the two big, trekking seasons which are the spring and the autumn they're the, the best times to go and when we run our trips um and when it comes to to, to the altitude you, you definitely just gotta um you know from a, a psychological point of view try and remember where you are like you know this trip can be you know it can be expensive we obviously try and help with that um especially for the people who are winning the trip but yeah. uh, you know obviously we've uh, remained as flexible as you can but certainly, you know, when you're up there, you, you can you can do things that will naturally help. It's like if all you're thinking about is I'm suffering, I'm suffering, I'm suffering. It's going to be the result. Um, sometimes you've got to kind of come back to, OK, I'm, I'm going to enjoy this as much as I can, even though it's challenging. But um, kind of, I, I felt like I skipped across, I skipped ahead then. What I meant to say was because uh, there was people who asked questions about experience um, is that it's just a walk. Um, you know, there's no climate involved. It's not yeah. that we do have trips that do you know uh, if, if it may be suitable for climbers uh, but the Everest base camp route and also we do other routes as well I think someone asked we do the three passes route yep yeah, we do uh, we also do a route via Gokyo Valley so there's actually three ways that we go to Everest yeah uh, I think as well some of the um, around best times to year weather um, um, Vicky and Jody have just posted a couple of links in there as well yeah just just if you do want to view um, more detail about the, the best months to go and the weather and things like that. Some really good links there. Definitely have a little look. Um, and they've also, because they're really on it today, uh, they've posted um, uh, the three uh, the three passes uh, trip that we've got there. And it's a great route. It's challenging. It's definitely hard because you're going over three high passes that are actually higher than Everest Base Camp, yeah. uh, as well as getting to Everest Base Camp. So it's really, you know, if you're going 
um, to Everest is probably the hardest route that you could do, I would say. Yeah. Uh, I know Anita's there asking about, are we talking about some, um, are we talking about Annapurna EBC here? No, we're talking about Everest EBC. Um, yeah. So Everest, I mean, we do Annapurna trips, we do Annapurna base camp, we also do Annapurna circuit. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of, a lot of trips that we do, but um, I see. Well, I know we focused a lot around Everest today, um, just because of obviously the competition. But yeah, any any questions is it's all good. Um, someone's asked. I think Sharon's asked about Kilimanjaro. Yes, we had some summits the other day on Kili. Yeah, That's yeah. The back of our, I'd say our second biggest trip that we do is Kilimanjaro, and it's um, via the Mosho route, which is absolutely brilliant. And yeah. definitely have a look um, at some of the information if you're interested in Kili on the website. Um, cool absolutely brilliant but yeah dave um what subject should we tackle yeah next? so i actually i've noticed a couple of people in the comments so i'm, I'm flitting between the comments and the the the, the okay. questions people have emailed in to try and make sure i capture everybody's one of yeah, them they're... was about um uh i think more than one person has asked about diabetes and whether the trek is possible if you're type one diabetic or or yeah. even type two um it is, it is absolutely still possible um, I would say there are a couple of things that you need to do in order to make sure you stay safe and healthy on the mountain. So the first one is make sure that you have a surplus of any medication that you actually need to take. Um, you know, so if you lose some, you're not going to be left short. The second thing is to make sure that perhaps you share some of that with someone else. So usually your guide um, or a close friend that knows how to, to, to administer any medication that you need. Um, but I've got um, a good friend of mine, um, you know, who's a type one diabetic and he's got it so well managed now that he knows based on what he eats that day and, and what his exercise levels are, what he needs to do. Um, I, I think the trickier one perhaps is when it's diet control, which I believe is, is type two. Um, yeah. With that, you might need to bring a lot more than just medication. You need to bring certain snacks and foods that will keep you healthy and energized on the mountain um, because your diet. Uh, whenever you go on a trek, it doesn't tend to vary that much. You know, although there is a wide variety of food on the EBC trek, generally speaking, after a few days, people tend to zero in on something they like, you know, and something that works with them, that keeps them energy and stuff. So, yeah, it's, um, you know, it, it can be a bit samey. So what yeah. we recommend then is you bring any of snacks and healthy things that, you, you know, will keep you going and keep the morale up. So, yeah, it absolutely does not exclude you from any of our treks as long as your insurance knows about it you've told us about it you tell your guide and you have everything you need um to to make sure that you're taken care of then let's go trekking you know no reason why we can chris says uh dave looks youthful today you've been detoxing dave, dave? well kind of yeah kind of yeah the last um i, I mean I, I don't know <laughs> do i look useful today no, Dave, I, uh, Chris clearly has noticed a difference, mate. But yeah, uh... he's clearly noticed a difference. Yeah, he's clearly noticed a difference. Yeah. No, I think the last um, two weeks myself, I've been um, well, two to three weeks, I've been hitting the gym quite hard. Yeah, eating, trying to eat a lot healthier. This year, I've got a lot of big plans, and um, yeah, it's I'm getting to the point now where it's so long since COVID that I can't keep calling it like lockdown weight. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so I have to actually get, you know, it's not a reasonable excuse anymore to say I put on a few pounds in lockdown, so it's got to go. Maybe that's why. <laughs> or maybe it's just the good lighting because I'm in Jen's office. Is that what it is? <laughs> it's the lighting, Dave. That's, that's probably what I've noticed in my office. The lighting isn't that good, is it? And I've noticed, Dave, maybe you've, have you got the, the, the beams there, have you? No, not at all, mate. Not at all. Um, let's see if this makes a difference. Ready? So. There you are. Do I look, do I look old? Wow, again? Dave, that's added about 10 years. That's added about 10 years. There we go. Yeah, not not that I'm too vain, but the light does make a nice big difference. Brilliant, brilliant. Um, no, we, we always like to have a laugh. Uh, yeah, the, the, uh, Chris um, has joined us uh, a lot over the years. We started doing these uh, Tuesday tune-ins back in um, during, yeah, that old word, COVID. Um, uh, back, in, I think, March 2020 was the first one we did these. And we've done one pretty much. Um, almost every week we've had uh, sometimes me and Dave are away or we're on trips or you know um, we do have a life outside of uh, Evertrek sometimes and uh, yeah sometimes we're not here um, but I think we've done about over uh, about 145 different um, episodes and they're all about different subjects so we try you know we, we, we kind of swing back to similar ones like today we talk about Everest Base Camp we've done quite a lot on Everest Base Camp over the years but um yeah, if this is your first time, I know there's a lot of first timers on here. Do join us every week. We like to talk about different subjects. And, you know, if you have any ideas about what you'd like those subjects to be, um, especially some of the other track of vet veterans on here who've been here since the beginning. Um, 
yeah, definitely, um, you know, drop us a line and, and, and let us know if there's any particular subjects yeah. you want you want to talk about. Um, I know a lot of people are asking about the um, uh, the winner as well. So what we'll do is we'll do another ten minutes of questions, and then I reckon Dave will do the winner. Um, yeah, because I know yeah. you've so just half an hour already, which is nuts. Yeah, <laughs> um, we're just testing on my monitor then the the flipping because at the moment Katrieve is here, but obviously I don't want the name to be backwards. Uh, when we announce the winner, you know, so I'm going to. Um, oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, you try it. Mean, it. it. Catrieve, I think, for everyone, it's been pointed out. So yeah, well, yeah, um, what, what company is that, Dave? Wow. Oh, it's a yeah, it's a really, really, really good trekking company. They take you from <laughs> the top of base camp all the way down to uh, the UK. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, really good. Um, yeah, guys. So we're a couple of more questions. I say a couple of more, a thousand more questions. <laughs> I was going to say a thousand more through. questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so Hannah Burke would have said, will the equipment be coordinated so that people aren't bringing things that others already have and can share? <sighs> Generally speaking, everyone's kind of responsible for their own trekking equipment. Um, yeah. In my experience, no one really brings a surplus of things. So you generally bring what you need and nothing more. Not, not to say that, you know, people don't lend each other stuff when they need, you know, if you if you need to help someone yeah um, but i would say no you need to be prepared um and uh, take the onus on yourself to be fully prepared in terms of equipment that said in a lot of these um places in Kathmandu, you are able to get um <laughs> sorry i just saw a comment <laughs> i'm not going to be the child i'm not going to rise to it but that, that was quite funny um yeah you um you can get a lot of the things you need in Kathmandu and things like that so yeah if um you know if you didn't want to pack poles for instance you can get poles quite cheaply in Kathmandu um you know if you you know there's a couple of things like caps and buffs and yeah you know little things I guess but with regards to you know boots second trend <laughs> base layers you know jackets hats that type of things that's what I 100 yeah. percent recommend you bring with you um, if you yeah. do go on an Everest Base Camp trip with us, um, why wouldn't you? Um, you'll get a free um, Evertrek duffel bag on arrival in Kathmandu. So what will happen is you can arrive in your suitcase, pack everything into the duffel bag that we give you, and then happy days. You can take that up to the mountain and it's yours to keep. We also offer free rental of a down jacket as well uh, and yeah. a sleeping bag. So those are pretty much, you know, particularly the sleeping bag and the down jacket are two big price items that you can certainly save a lot on. Exactly. So people have um, mentioned a few things that may be going on, like health-wise, or maybe some things like vertigo I see come up here. And definitely, any any time, if you do have any medical conditions, I mean, we always say, you know, speak to a medical professional, uh, whether that's your GP, whether that's, um, uh, you know, a travel clinic, if it's something specific to travel, um, you know, and things like that. Because obviously, we're, we, we take Evertrekkers to, um, you know, places like Everest Base Camp, and, you know, we, we, we come from the advice, but obviously we're not medically um, given advice. It's more around, you know, more around customers that have had similar experiences. And we had a couple of people who, um, you know, struggle with heights big time, like my good friend, Max. Um, Dave, I know when, uh, when was April 2019, we trekked to Everest Base Camp and Max, seriously, like heights is a massive thing yeah. that has bad vertigo. And there are some bridges that you do go over on the way to Everest Base Camp. One of them, the tallest one, uh, the Hillary Bridge after Sir Edmund Hillary, um, who summited with Tenzin Norgay back in 1953, the first to summit Everest. Um, and th that bridge is about 110 metres tall. So it's definitely high, but the guides are there to kind of coach you through that and get you over these because it's part of the challenge. And especially if heights is a bad one or vertigo, you know, I, yeah, I'm fortunate I've never suffered with it, but I've seen people, especially like Max, who's, been, who's a very good friend of ours. And seeing him suffer, but he got to Everest Base Camp. He got to Kalapatar as well, which is about um, a few hundred metres higher than Everest Base Camp, and, and he got there as well. So it's definitely achievable. Just just obviously go understand that, you know, it is there, um, and it is hard, but you can do it. Um, you know, and this is part of the challenge as well, definitely, if you've got those things. But yeah. medical stuff, you know, any pre-existing, we get a lot of Evertrekkers who've come with heart conditions, with, you know, other things going on. And ultimately, then it's it's your decision. Um, a lot of GPs aren't altitude um, trained, uh, believe it or not, um, just from our experience that we've heard. Yeah. Um, but if you do speak to a, a professional or around high altitude, um, you know that can be a specialist, and there are they are out there. Then you could get more specialist advice. Obviously, a GP knows you well. Um, I'm just just pointing out that sometimes they'll go, "Oh, don't go to altitude if you've got something going on." Whereas, actually, if you talk talk to someone, they'll say, "Well." You know, you can do, but you've got to do this. Or, you know, maybe you can do, but this is your limit. You know, there, there'll be options. 
um, for you. But just obviously, most of the time, it comes down to yourself. Um, you know, yeah. if, if you're prepared to go there, because this is adventure travel. Um, any trip that you go into the mountains or high altitude, um, as we, me and Dave have ch- ch- talked about, is is dangerous, uh, inherently dangerous, and you've got to be a little bit comfortable with that. Yeah, um, you know, and that adds to it in a way because <laughs> it's quite cool. And if it was easy, everyone would be there, but everyone doesn't go there, which which makes it um, quite special. Yeah, <laughs> Brian yeah. King. I think Dan bigger if I win. <laughs> he probably does need some cheering, Brian. That's right. Scottish, my friend, my mother's Scottish, you know, so you know, <laughs> still in. Um, yeah, Adele has asked a, a couple of uh, interesting questions. So one of them, what's the weight that everyone is expected to carry? She followed it up with, do you have to do a wild wee? Um, so the first one, the weight that you're expected to carry. So there is a weight limit when you take the Lukla flight, um, which is your duffel bag and your day pack combined, 15 kilos. Yeah. Um, it's possible to push the boundaries a little bit, but you do run the risk of if everyone does that, they'll take the heaviest bags off the flight. You don't really get advanced notice of that. And then your bag has to try and catch you up the mountain, um, which can be a little bit frightening for people when they arrive and their bag's not there, you know, that sinking feeling. So, but there are a couple of little tricks of the trade. If you've got a lot of camera equipment, you know, one of those like cameraman sort of vest tops, all the pockets and stuff like that. Yeah. They weigh their bag. They weigh the bags, not you. So you know that you can get away with it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But, you know, little little sneaky tip. Exactly. And you know, know little things like wear your boots, wear everything heavy. You know, you know, yeah. pour your water away, that type of thing. So you can kind of push the boundaries a little bit. Yeah. Um, Definitely. All you've got to carry really is your day pack. Our, all our trips are port supported. We're very proud of Evertrek that every cu- country that we do business in, we only use local. Um, uh, people to actually run our trips. So from the people that pick you up, the hotels, the guides, the porters, the cooks, <coughs> the tea houses, they're all run by Nepalese people. Yeah. Um, um, and we're very happy that we use porters as well because it provides them a job and also a way to train up to be in a guide. Um, so they'll be there to carry the bulk of the weight. Um, you'll just have to carry your day pack with everything you normally would on a normal hike. Um, right, Dave, um, I was going to say, just because we're ticking on, let's do five minutes of quick fire. So there's a lot. I think the guys have posted a lot of links on here, guys, if you've got um, specific questions. And obviously, we're going to try and answer them as, as, as much as we can. If we don't, um, obviously, we want to try and get your questions answered. So do reach out to us and we can get your specific question answered because I know there's a lot of questions here and, um, you know, around weight limits. Are there any costas on the route? Which I can say no. Um, you know, what height is Everest Base Camp? Five, three, six, four meters. Um, how much for that cap? This is priceless. <laughs> um, no, no, this is off um, our head of operations in Nepal. Uh, Anuj brought it over as a gift, um, yeah, uh, in the years, uh, last year. So, yeah, he's, he's a great guy. But, Dave, should we do that? Should we do some quick fire five minutes? Then we'll do the competition announcement. Yeah, why not? Um, hey, do you want to do it? Do you want me to ask you five qu- questions real quickly? <laughs> yeah. The- you're gonna, you're gonna have to remind your internet Go and to um, be quick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Go for it. Sorry, I missed that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Your internet is um, it's not playing ball. Okay, so um, is it true that food eaten on Everest is all vegetarian? Um, so yeah, and when you're trekking to Everest, it's primarily we recommend primarily vegetarian diet. Yeah, um, we don't eat meat uh, just because it's uh, you know you're in a very re- remote region. Um, where the refrigeration isn't always guaranteed. So we eat a lot of vegetables. Great if you fancy losing a bit of weight, definitely. Okay. How long does it take for a person <laughs> who is not very active to prepare themselves for this challenge? So, yeah, anything with training, you know, that the, the sooner you can get started, the better. But some people, as Dave said earlier, can throw themselves into it. The fitter you are, the more enjoyable you'll, you, you'll it'll be. Um, you won't be so tired at the end of the day. Uh, um, you know, obviously, you know, we recommend not rolling off the sofa straight into it, but certainly, um, you know, get out, pack on your back, you know, hike, maybe if, you, if you're a runner, that helps. Um, you don't need to be, I'm not a big runner. It's just walking at the end of the day. So do more walking here in the UK or whatever you're watching it from uh, before you go. Yeah. Uh, Sophie's asked, how are the Nepalese people with Western visitors? Oh, I mean, the Nepalese, I mean, geez, they're, they're one of the most friendliest people you'll ever meet. They, they, you yeah. know, they, they treat you like God um, is, is the way that they've uh, because in um, in Nepal, 80 percent of the people are Hindu. Um, and I think about 15 percent of Buddhist uh, primarily. Um, obviously, we've got a lot of uh, Hindu 
and uh, Buddhist guides. Uh, the Sherpas, obviously, are Buddhist, and they like their their kind of view on life is just to look after you. Like honestly, it's just amazing. This they're so special. Um, you know, I can't speak highly enough of, of the Nepalese. They're just beautiful people. Yeah, final one that you can answer really easily for uh, um, Edward Goslin. Uh, will it be best to take my girlfriend, who has a bit of hiking experience but is limited, or my friend, who has done quite a bit of hiking? So, girlfriend or friend? <laughs> wow, that's a difficult one. Why not bring them both? I mean, geez, you know, yeah, you, you know, I know they say three's a crowd, but you'll be with other people. Um, yeah. You know, you don't want to leave anyone behind. You know, this is an awesome adventure for everyone. Bring, bring both. Yeah, awesome. Nice, Dave. Nice. Right, I'll uh, see you. Okay. Let's have a look. What are the best mountain shoes for the challenge, Dave? Uh, the ones that fit you. <laughs> um, but yeah, you need you need a you need a really good pair of hiking boots. Um, for every space camp, you don't need anything like technical. Just a good pair of hiking boots that fit right and are well worn in. Yeah, nice. Uh, okay, let's have a little look. Oof, sorry, I've just skipped. Best time of year to climb, uh, to go to Everest Base Camp, Dave? Um, so two times a year. We do March uh, March to May, and then we do September to November. So autumn and spring. Awesome. Um, let's have a little look. Just going through here. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, best time of year. Oldest person we've answered that. Sorry, guys. I'm just literally flying through this uh, experience. I think we've, we've covered that. Um, any progress on the Mont Blanc for our Diane, Dave? I know that's, that's literally really soon isn't it We're so close, close to that one this close finer <laughs> minor minor details now and then we'll be there yeah yeah definitely we're talking days rather than weeks now diane uh, won't be long at all um with regards to size backpack you need for for, for base camp uh, 30 liters give or take not much yeah. more really than that but you know i've 20 i've seen people with 20 liter backpack that's a bit slim so i i, I, I use a 30 liter osprey Nice. And what about water? Um, a lot of, some people have asked about buying water, uh, or they should they take their own water filters? But in Everest Space Camp, Dave? Yeah, Everest Space Camp, we provide you with the water filters. So they're yeah. water purifiers, so we can get water from local sources, purify it, and it's perfectly safe for you to drink. It means that you don't buy any bottled water whilst you're on the mountain, except yeah. for one or two days um, when you're really high up and the water source is not um, available. What we recommend you do then is buy the bottles of water, but take them back off the mountain with you. So at least then, even if you are buying them, you're actually removing plastic from the mountain. Um, yeah, that's what we recommend. Um, last question, Dave. And this is, uh, I think it's from John Lee Monk. Uh, what's the most special part of this trip or last an influence it'll have on you? Oh, wow. Wow. Quick fire, huh? Um, <laughs> Sorry. Honestly, for me, it snapped me out of uh, a type of mundane living i think that i was before i went to base camp i probably got stuck in a little bit of a loop not necessarily an unhappy one but one where i thought that things that i wanted to do were kind of past me and i was just going to work now till i retired and i wasn't the type of person that went on grand adventures going on everest base camp taught me that anybody anybody can have an adventurous lifestyle it does yeah. work with a normal life um, you know, and you can do all those things whilst working to retirement and have great memories. Um, I still sometimes blows my mind when I think to myself, I will be 40 in May and I've, I've traveled the world as a result of one holiday that I took. We don't like to call it a holiday, but, <laughs> I, but, but essentially is what it was. This is what it was in my mind at the time. I did one trip back in 2016 and now I'll be 40 in May and I've traveled the world and, I'm very lucky to have the job I had, but I think I would have done it anyway, just based off that one trip. Amazing. Fantastic. Lovely, Dave. Lovely words, mate. Nice. I share that with Dave. And, uh, yeah, it's, every space camp is a special place, guys. And, well, I think um, I think we've left people a little bit. So thanks to everyone who has, uh, who has been patiently waiting for the winner announcement. Um, Dave, I know you've um, gone through the effort of writing the name on a board. Actually, oh, actually, I don't want to take credit for this one. Um, Jody wrote this one. Um, oh really? Always, yeah, yeah. It's always a team effort. Always a team effort. Um, so, guys, thank you, everybody yeah. that took part and entered the competition. This has been our biggest one yet. Absolutely blown away. Um, we're going to announce the winner right now by you know literally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Let's drumroll, drumroll. No, I was going to say um, for for everyone who's entered. Yeah, I just want to say a big thanks first. Um, for everyone who's who's kind of entered, um, ev you know the Everest competition, and 
Um, if you don't um, win, uh, we, you know, we do have some runner-up prizes. So we'll certainly be following up with everyone by email. So just keep an eye on your inboxes. But good luck, everyone. Um, thanks for being a part of an amazing competition. And um, yeah, any, obviously, you know, you're in the right place if this is something that you want to do. Um, I know a lot of you in, in the High Altitude Ever Trekkers group. We've got a lot of our customers in there. Thanks for everyone as well that supported us and, and followed us on Instagram. I know we're over like 10,500 now, which is amazing. But Dave, right, I don't want to steal your thunder. You go for it, mate. Well, do you want me to lift it up? Okay. Yeah, go for it. So the Why winner not? of the competition for a free trip to base camp is Paula. Hey. Hey. <laughs> so congratulations, Paula. I know Paula. Really when you can see it. Um, you can't really see all of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to kind of bring it in from the side. You ready? <laughs> see that little, little mate in the little thing? I can take Paula a picture. Adam, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Paula Adam is Paula on the live. Where's Paula? I don't oh, she know. is amazing. Is she? Oh, I can amazing. Just see amazing. Where is she? I'm just trying to see the comments. Oh, congratulations, Paula. I'm just trying to find your um your comment. Fantastic. Oh yeah, <laughs> Paula. I think there's a lot of. Uh, Wow, could be some tears there on that. That's brilliant. <laughs> Congratulations, mate. Well done. Um, nice one, Dave, and nice one, Jody, as well. There's some artwork going on there. Brilliant. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. This it was. It was like, uh, what was that? What was that art show that everyone knew? Art Attack. It was art like attack. Art Attack in there. Yeah, we, we all got involved, but. Honestly, Fantastic. super congratulations, Paula. It's going to be absolutely amazing. It's going to absolutely yeah. blow your mind. Thank you to everybody that did uh, take part as well. Brian, put the speech away, you know, <laughs> take it out in a few months when we do the next one. But um, yeah. Take Dan Paula. with you, definitely, Paula. <laughs> yeah. So what will happen now, Paula, is we'll drop you an email and yeah. um, it's not that complicated. Tell us when you want to go to Everest Base Camp. Wow. <laughs> Done, <Dundo. laughs> Amazing. Sorry, so just looking at all the comments. You're getting a lot of love here, uh, Paula. I, I bet these people are, are thinking, Paula, take me, take me. But <laughs> um, yeah, no, congratulations. It's It really is an amazing, amazing journey. So obviously we can't wait to, to welcome you in Nepal. Um, obviously we'll be in touch. I know that, that I'm, I'm back um, on the weekend, but that's why I'll be back in the office next week. But the guys will be dropping you a message. And uh, yeah, fantastic. Oh, it's, it's always nice when, when they're on the live, Dave, isn't it? It's, uh, it's yeah, sometimes... always. Yeah, I absolutely love it. I mean, it, it's funny because some people like they, they still quite can't believe it. And what's amazing is that we've done a few of these now when we were actually lucky to have done the competition. People have won. And they've gone on the trip and then they've come back and they've just they yeah. still can't, can't believe that they won it's amazing <laughs> and honestly paula it's gonna you're gonna it's gonna blow your mind you'll have an amazing experience exactly <laughs> look at lee lee wyatt i'm booking the three passes f it i'll uh I, 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 brilliant lee go for it mate you know where we are jump on the website <laughs> uh, do, do uh definitely get checking your emails after the live um I know the uh, Lee Lee Morn's on here as well. Lee won the the Killy trip. Uh, what was it? Year before last, I think. Lee wasn't it? Yeah. So one of our previous winners. Um, awesome. Great to have some previous winners of, of other competitions we've run, but uh, absolutely fantastic. And uh, <laughs> John, when's the next com? Um, well, look, honestly, it's been fantastic, Dave. I think we still got ten minutes, so we still got a chance to answer some more questions. I think, if if that's okay. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. So. Um... Let's have a quick well. well if, uh, if anyone else does have some more questions, well, I know a lot of you got to get back to life stuff work. Thanks for you know um, spending your time uh, this lunchtime with us. Um, and listen, we're here every week, every Tuesday. We do um, talk about different subjects. We try to help our ever trackers as much as we can prepare for this kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, definitely. I feel really bad for Adam Reddy, and he said, "Sorry, Adam had a heart attack." Adam, I am so sorry. Oh, no. but it's Paula Adam. Damn. Sorry, Adam. <laughs> I do feel bad because I see so many funny replies afterwards. I saw one guy reply um, on an earlier competition and said, "Sorry, you spelt my name wrong," <laughs> and stuff like. Oh, I know, I know. It's like I say, it's it's hard because, like you said, we had almost thirty thousand um, people who, who registered, which is like, yeah, it's probably more than ten thousand more than any other competition we've we've run. So, look. You know, thanks to everyone who's, who's who's obviously been part of this, and um, you know, we'll we'll obviously keep in touch. And you're in the right place, you know, if, if this is something that you do want to do. Um, I know Lee's just talking there. My trip was genuinely life changing. Thank you so much. We also raised money for a good cause. Fantastically, 
Brilliant. And Chris is changing a name with people. Brilliant. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm sure there'll be a few Paulers then uh, uh, around. Brilliant. Um, brilliant. Well, Sarah McDonald, how long do you spend at base camps? Good question. So, um, because we'll, we'll go into some questions before we leave. We've got another 10 minutes. Um, and yeah, so Everest Base Camp, it depends on uh, the, the weather, the group, um, how you're feeling. Like, Because sometimes we, we can spend an hour, maybe two hours there. Just depends on how you're feeling. Because one thing we do is, is when we get there, we obviously want to enjoy it. We get some pictures. And especially if you're there with uh, the summit teams there. So in the spring, usually the, the summiters uh, are obviously camping there. Um, and then you can uh, you can kind of you know you can have a chat with them if you like if they if they're cool to chat, um, you know it's always nice if you go there in the autumn. There's no um, no one really climbs in the autumn rarely. I think I saw someone a uh, team there, North Face team, uh, Hilary Nelson, who sadly passed away on Manaslu uh, uh, last year. Um, she was skiing down the Lotse Couloir um, with her her partner, and um, they were at base camp in their North Face camp. But other than that, you don't really see them. You only see them in the spring. So. Yeah, it, we, I'd say, you know, if the group are really good, the weather's good, you don't need to get back, you know, you're good on time, then you can spend, you know, a couple of hours there. If you are tight on time, if some of the group aren't feeling well, if the weather's deteriorating, then you might only spend like half hour, 45 minutes. So, yeah, it does um, uh, definitely uh, does, you know, obviously you want to spend as much time as you can there. But sometimes, um, you know, rare trips that we've had, private trips we have around and people can stay at base camp, but that's on the time of year. Um, very rare that we do that, but we can offer that if like you want to do a private trip. Obviously a bit more expensive if you do want to do that. Um, yeah. yeah, good question though. Uh, Chris Sardo's asked an interesting question. How do we deal with a situation where a client in a group or party becomes ill on the trail? Nothing serious is requiring an evac, but um, rather where they really need a rest day because of sickness but the set itinerary dictates the group. Moves on. So it's a good question, Chris. Um, so if someone becomes like a little bit unwell, so where yeah. they, they kind of really do need to kind of like not continue for a day or two. Yeah. It's very, it's a, we have to kind of deal with it on a one-on-one -on -one situation. So in situations in the past when someone's not been able to, you know, has had to lose a day or two with the group, it all really depends on their own itinerary, um, you know, and when they have to be back. So generally speaking, if you lose a day or two with the itinerary, your options there are kind of limited with regards to carrying on. So, you know, because you've got that look la flight at the beginning and a look la flight at the end. Yeah. If you're sort of halfway to base camp and you become unwell and you're not able to continue, it doesn't necessarily yeah. mean you have to go down right away. Um, <laughs> but if you don't walk the next day or the next day, um, yeah, unfortunately, the chances of actually completing the full trip are not that great there are yeah. other things we can do so like for instance if you're on the three passes trek um which is quite a long trek um and someone becomes a little bit unwell they might just lose a day or two and not be able to do all three passes but can still go to base camp um you know after yeah. they've had a couple of days and make it back down in time so it really does depend on what trip they're on what reason um for them being unwell um, and things like that. So it's not a one answer question, unfortunately, but yeah, we do our best to make sure that everyone's trip is maximized no matter what happens. Um, so nice. yeah, hopefully that helps. Some good questions as well. I think, um, Alex, I'll come on to your question in a sec. You know, do we pass any temples on the trip or take part in any prayers or ceremonies? So we do have a day where we go around um, exploring some of the sites in Kathmandu. It's actually pretty cool. Um, Kathmandu is a great place. Like, I, yeah, it's absolutely brilliant. I can see little Ellie there. Hello, Ellie. <laughs> She's jumping in. Um, it is absolutely really cool just to explore. Um, yeah, some of the uh, some of Kathmandu, but on the route as well, you do pass some monasteries. Uh, Tengmoche Monastery. Um, it's a three thousand nine hundred meters. It's actually a really cool spot to go, and you could go in there and and watch. Um, you know, if it's they're not always doing this, but if you catch them at the right time, um, you can see some of the the Buddhist monks there in their in their prayer time. Yeah, um, quite quite a sight and quite spiritual experience as well um definitely yeah. absolutely brilliant and that's what i mean about the trek it's not just about the trek it's the landscape the people the cultures the suffering you know <laughs> because uh you know when it's uh you know when when, when your, your body's aching or you've got a bit of a headache because the altitude you know there's um there's so much that goes into it it's great it's great yeah absolutely um chris um oh man i'm gonna totally butcher your surname labouchange i'll go with Good yeah, good try. Um, is it right if you can summit Mount Blanc, EBC should be okay? 
I mean, in theory, yeah. Um, although, you know, not Mont, it's not as high. Everest Base Camp is a lot higher than the summit of Mont Blanc. But Mont Blanc is not an easy mountain to summit. So you have to be relatively fit. You are going to have to get over 4,000 meters. So, you know, yeah. relatively speaking, you're going to be okay with the altitude. Yeah. So in theory, yes, but not. it's, it's kind of like, um, you know, mountain maths never really works like that. You know, so I summited Kilimanjaro. So in theory, Tupcal should have been okay. But on my first attempt at Tupcal, things didn't yeah. go right and I had to come down and do it a second time. So yeah, mountain maths never normally works out that way. But in theory, if someone is fit enough to summit Mont Blanc, yeah. their fitness level should be fine for getting to every space camp. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> look at Marky e. V. More than 800 people on the live. Now back down to the hardcore ever trackers. Definitely Marky e. V. It's all great, isn't it? Uh, great to see so many people on here. But um, yeah, uh, go with Dave there as well. Like um, anytime you go to altitude is the first time, essentially, because you've got to acclimatize. I know there's obviously other things now that you can do um, to pre-acclimatize from a scientific point of view, uh, altitude tents, that kind of thing. But the tried and tested way, the way that we've always done it is acclimatizing on the trip, uh, you know, drinking enough water, going at a good pace, good mindset, eating the right food, good spirits, doing the training before you get on there so your body's in the best position it can be. Um, yeah. And, you know, if you climb in Mont Blanc, if you go into other, other, if you're fit enough to do Mont Blanc, you're fit enough to do Everest Base Camp, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, from our experience. And it's, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's fantastic. Um, good stuff, Dave. Well, what we got? Four minutes. I know we've got a few more. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, yeah, I've got a question I've spotted from Tizzy um, Salisbury that says, I have Parkinson's disease and I've signed up for April 2024. Yeah. Is there anything extra you think I should consider? Um, honestly, Tizzy, I think you'll know how yeah. capable your body is and what you need to do. So I wouldn't want to give you any sort of medical advice. The only thing I would say is it's always a good idea to obviously make sure you're fully covered with your insurance and they're aware of everything. Yeah. Um, and anything you feel you need, don't be um, quiet about it. You know, let us know because often there is things we can do to help people get up, whether that's hire an extra porter to kind of support you if you need help with the rucksack or anything like that. I know um, Parkinson's can be, you know, quite a wide variety yeah. of symptoms and, and things like that. So if there is anything that we can help you with, don't be shy in shouting about it and let us know and we'll do whatever we can. Yeah, exactly. We've we've taken a, um, a lot of ever trackers who have got specific, um, you know, kind of, uh, you know, chronic uh, symptoms of, of lots of different chronic diseases and, 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 you know, not we haven't had anyone with Parkinson's, but, you know, certainly managing it at sea level, uh, you know, I suppose the. There'll be the same processes we can manage whatever needs to happen at, um, yeah. at altitude. Um, but yeah, we, we don't like to, to say no to anything. It's all about, you know, how, how, how can we help you? Um, you know, what, what can we do to kind of assist? And, um, you know, we'd love to, to help that journey of yours, Tizzy, definitely. Um, yeah. You know, I think you I think you did say you've already signed up for 2024. So fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. I think someone mentioned as well about climbing Killy. Um, I can't remember who that was. Um, and I think it was apologies if you're on here and I've forgotten your name. There's been a lot of comments, but if it is you, do do comment again because you'll pop to the top. I think it was um uh, you might be a, a, an amputee uh, wants to climb um Killy, which is absolutely fantastic. Um and yeah, hundred percent. Like I I I kind of copy what i just said really around you know we can we can make anything happen um yeah just let us know and uh 100 we can we can help you get that summit um yeah. you know with regards to that absolutely uh interesting question touches on uh, something i have a little bit of experience with uh red taka hummingbird that's an amazing name uh, is that native american do you think that's amazing anyway red <laughs> taka hummingbird you have arthritis in your knees any recommendations for knee supports so I, I don't have arthritis, although I'm almost certainly going to get it. Um, I had a knee injury um, and an operation to repair it. And the knee supports that I use are called Active 650. Um, yeah. They're just a, a really good neoprene knee support. I've used it for um, all sorts of mountain, hiking, skiing. Um, it doesn't necessarily prevent re-injury because it is just a neoprene support, but it yeah. does hold everything a little bit tighter um especially in the cold it'll keep your knee a little bit more insulated which stops it aching so yeah um active active 650 really good nice uh there was john hilton john yeah that's right mate it was yourself wasn't it john yeah 100 i mean reach out to us um you know we can 
<laughs> just reading Chris. Chris, yours bring the humor, mate. That's brilliant. Um, yeah, John, uh, definitely reach out to us. We'd love to, to help you um, summit Killy and um, you know do what we can to support you and, and get you out there. Just reach out to us um, on email, mate, info at evertrek.co.uk or drop us a, on, on the website. You've got the, the messenger there. Um, Betty the Yeti, you can drop us a message on to Betty and we'll get back to you. Um, ooh, excuse me. So, John, yeah, we'd love to, to assist you with that. Um, <laughs> Chris, one more will help. Um, definitely. Um, right, Dave, I think it's coming up for an hour now. I think. Uh, yeah, I think that's, guys, wow. I think that's, I mean, honestly, I feel like we could keep these going. One thing to say is that obviously anybody that's enjoyed, you know, interacting yes. with us and talking about base camp is we don't yeah. just do these when we do the competitions every single Tuesday, bar about three a year, um, you know, at 1230 on Facebook, we go live, we talk about stuff. Um, generally, we don't, you know, there's perhaps uh, we'd love to see every single one of you back, but generally without the comp, we do get a, li a few less people, which means we can interact um, and talk about anything. We usually have a subject we'll talk about, but honestly, anything goes in the Q and A. Um, yeah, and we'd love all of you to keep joining us every Tuesday, so we can, you know, keep doing this and keep the inspiration going and keep the uh, motivation going. And yeah, let's all get out there. Yeah, that's it, isn't it? Because we always want, you know, we started these to during a time where we couldn't go on adventures, but we, you know, we realized that actually people still have questions anytime, not just during COVID. And that's what we're here for. And a big part of what we do is about the trip preparation, um, you know, helping you before you go on the trip, obviously the trip stuff's important, but if we can get you prepared and, and doing these trips as part of that, uh, doing these lives as part of that, then, then great. If it helps you, you know, even just a few percent, that could be the difference between you getting to the summit of Killy, getting to Everest base camp, getting to Machu Picchu or not. Yeah. Um, and that's what we um, we hopefully um, yeah you you've enjoyed it but yeah thanks Dave I know we've had um, some signal issues but I hope it's been okay I mean too fuzzy but well done mate yeah no it's really good um, yeah honestly really enjoyed this guys it's been great talking to every one of you I just I love people that want to live an adventurous lifestyle want to yeah. do adventurous things that's what this Tuesday tune in is all about so if you found us today and you want to be an adventurer or you are an adventurer um, yeah keep coming back. Exactly. Great. Stuff. I know there's loads of questions I'd love to answer. Honestly, any specifics, Paul, I remember Paul Hillier. How are you doing, Paul? Hope all is well, mate. Um, I know you had a specific question about Tucal. I'll see if I can find it. And just uh, just before I leave, because I really feel like I need to answer this, Paul. I think it was to do with crampons for the time of year you go, which is November. If you don't have them, Paul, um, or I think you do, um, might be worth just taking anyway, um, because sometimes in November there can be snow up there and ice. The guys do carry them. So you don't necessarily have to take them. So if they, if it is if it if it does need crampons for summer, that's it. You you won't need them in the summer. No, I I, I know summer's broad. If you're talking June, July, August, you won't need them. Um, I'd say yeah. in that early May we did need them, um, but the guides didn't have them. If the, some of the guys didn't, um, yeah, crampons. So yeah. for fat pants. <laughs> <laughs> you need one of those umbrellas that Michael Jackson used to walk around with to keep the sun off you. You know, it's uh, yeah, but. Brilliant. Awesome, man. So I think I think that's it, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. it. Great, great. That's well it. Done. Everyone else, we'll be in touch. Take it easy, guys. See you soon. Yeah, see you guys. Bye. <laughs> right, Dave, I get my paper.